So, Holy Trinity Clapham, where did you come from? HDC was built in 1776 when the existing parish church here in Clapham was in poor repair and it was too small for the community's needs. This new church on the common became home to a group known as the Clapham Sect, including an influential MP, William Wilberforce, a wealthy merchant, John Thornton, who financed the building of HTC, the Reverend Henry Venn, and others. It's well known to many of us that they successfully campaigned for the abolition of the slave trade. Equally important, and also still paying dividends today, was their work for general spiritual and moral reformation. The Bible Society, which grew out of the efforts of a 15-year-old Welsh girl, Mary Jones, was founded with HTC's help in 1804. The Bible Society is still active today, with 150 local chapters serving 200 countries. HTC also had a hand in founding the Church Mission Society in 1799, against the backdrop of the Great Awakening that was beginning to sweep Europe in that time. The Church Mission Society, CMS, today has staff in 40 countries on five continents, bringing the love of Christ, raising disciples, and supporting churches. Our forebears also worked to fight poverty, improve the lot of child laborers, and raise the general level of morality. And this was all done in an era when Christian work and Christian reform really went against the grain of society. And doesn't that sound a little familiar here in 2021? Now, the building itself has had several modifications through the years. When John Venn became rector in 1792, his preaching was popular and it swelled the congregation. And this resulted in the construction of the front portico where we come in the building so carriages could be unloaded out of the rain. The vestries on both sides of the east end were also built. The original pews were Georgian box pews. And if you like, you can go online and search for pictures of them. They were literally big stalls, big boxes that people would sit in separated from one another. And in the galleries, we still have the original pews, but in the 1870s, the pews on the ground, the box pews, were cut down and modified after a century of service, and what we have now is what was modified then. In 1903, the east end behind me was, reconst was uh, reconstructed, and it was enlarged. And then during World War II, the church suffered serious bomb damage. In fact, the only safe place in the building because of roof damage was to be under the galleries, and until the roof reconstruction was finished in 1952, worshipers had to stay under the galleries during church services. The church has remained largely unchanged since then, except for the early 1990s when this platform here in front was added, and then also at that time the side chapel on this side of the building was divided horizontally with the big meeting room upstairs, the small room, the toilets, and the kitchen down below, what we now refer to as the Wilberforce Center. So in some ways today, HTC finds itself just as the congregation did in the old parish church in the 1770s. We're in a building not well designed for what it's being called to do. It's even more poorly suited to host what we'll ask it to do in the near future. And like our 18th century counterparts, we also face a headwind from secular society. But we believe God is calling us to sail boldly into the face of that, and he will make revival possible.